In this Cardano update video, we're gonna look at the growth of the ecosystem, the future for Cardano, which is starting to play out right now, and they're starting to tell us more about that. Scaling of Cardano, which a lot of people are interested in right now. And then look at the rewards that you can get from the Sunday Swap ISOs. If you are part of that, you can actually claim your rewards right now and get those tokens. So let's get into it. Um, firstly, we're gonna look at the TVL on Cardano right now. 134 million, okay? This is not a lot, okay? So let's just put this into context. Cardano is Cardano is growing, but not big in any way. You've really only got one, um, you know, main uh, area that you can have TVL right now, which is Sunday Swap's got $120 million of TVL. There's one main reason for this, in my opinion, and that's just because there's no stable coin on Cardano, right? It's like a massive omission that I think is just preventing um, a lot of liquidity to come onto uh, the platform itself. But this is gonna grow over time. So usually as TVL grows, then so does valuation. So it's going in the right direction. The health of Cardano is really good. A lot was made about scaling and you can't get transactions through, but Cardano have done a lot actually short term to scale the network and the amount of transactions and data that can go through. And you can see that here it's it's working absolutely fine this is a great dashboard by the way cardano blockchain insights they also have a twitter if you want to go and follow them um this is completely open source this data so really awesome you know you can see tvl going up uh, ada wallets just continues to rise this is really good you know for a burgeoning ecosystem three million wallets is pretty decent but obviously we're nowhere near you know kind of bigger players like ethereum right now Explosive growth is good. And we obviously have a bunch of lending protocols as well that actually can't launch yet until some improvement proposals actually get uh, through, which is gonna be in the middle of the year. So I don't really think TVL is gonna grow that much until those lending protocols come on. A lot more liquidity goes into them as well. But um, another Cardano account on Twitter, Cardano Daily, you know, shows us this one. You can see uh, Sunday Swap is actually in the um, kind of biggest growth, um, you know, applications by TVL. TVL, right? So, you know, again, 114 million, it's comparatively small, but 66% growth is decent. But, you know, looking at other systems like um, Astroport on Terra, you know, that's grown 46% and it's got over a billion dollars in TVL. So TVL is not high on Cardano right now. They're still building out these apps. And so for my, in, in, in my opinion, it's not going to come to really the second half of this year, but, you know, growing and, you know, people obviously want to start using it. Uh, like I said, the main kind of thing that is holding back Cardano uh, TVL for me is um, the use of a stable coin. People just do not want to, you know, go into Cardano all the time. You're swapping a risk asset for a risk asset. And it just it's just not ideal. Institutional investors, large investors, they, you're going to have to have some sort of stable coin on here. Cardano is working on a decentralized stable coin called Jed. Um, I really don't like this name. I think they should either call the actual coin something else, but hey, you know, uh, let's see if it works out. So the way that Jed works in, in a decentralized way is exactly the same as Terra Luna and UST. It's exactly the same um, in terms of it has a reserve asset. The reserve asset will not be listed on the crypto market as far as I know. Coty came out with an update and said essentially the a reserve asset is going to be open to to qualified investors only. So read into that. Essentially, in the states, there's lots of securities regulations that prevent normal people buying these things. Um, you know, in the Terra Luna landscape, Terra Luna is right here. It's number seven. So yeah, take that for what it is. But until a stable coin is on Cardano, um, you know, the dexes and everything are pretty much useless in terms of large institutional flows, in my opinion. So you absolutely need a stable coin on here. Now you've got Milcomeda as well, be building an EVM sidechain, maybe. People People can port USDT and USDC on there. But just like out of context, you can see Tether right here, right? So Tether has um, a 24-hour trading volume of $60 billion, right? Which is pretty much bigger than, um, you know, the top 10 combined. That shows you how important a stable coin is for liquidity and attracting liquidity. Without a stable coin, Cardano won't grow. So it just needs it and it needs it fast. Um, so let's go over to the, the kind of future for Cardano and what they're planning, right? So you can see here the first loans to Kenyan SMEs went out over the weekend. This is really good stuff. So if you've been following Cardano, you know, they basically want to be a um, unique a uh, decentralized finance ecosystem for Africa. Um, obviously, it's worldwide, right? Anyone can use it. Anyone can deploy apps on Cardano. Um, but th them specifically want to open up, obviously, uh, a lot of... Um, you know, people in Africa to, you know, basically use Cardano as a bank, a DeFi ecosystem. But really what, what they're doing is 
um, getting money from the West, as it were, or, you know, the States or wherever. Um, so anyone can use that and then lend money to, you know, African SMEs. This is obviously huge. If you know kind of how the market works there, interest rates are usually very high. People usually borrow money short term and pay very high fees. And so, you know, APYs, if you made them into an APY, very, very high APYs. Um, so obviously, Cardano is trying to step in here and essentially lower the interest rate for people in developing countries to borrow money, but also comparatively for investors um, that are outside of those areas, you know, you can invest and get a comparatively higher rate than what you currently get in a, you know, an investment product in, you know, America or Europe, which is, you know, sometimes minus percent, right? So zero percent. So this is what they're trying to do. And obviously this is a really amazing use case where you can actually use Cardano to get a great yield. Um, and because of uh, the loans being, you know, kind of uh, over, they'll be basically be pockets of loans, right? So you'll have a, a fairly decent risk profile, profile for the loan. Um, so fairly low risk. Um, but higher rewards than usual. It's just opening up the market, right, the, to one that hasn't been there. I still personally see a ton of risk in that model. Um, I don't think Cardano are just going to be able to waltz into various African countries and kind of open up banking systems. And there's going to be a ton, there's just a ton of like issues with it. And no one really knows how that's going to play out. I have big hopes for it because it just sounds like uh, a potentially very good idea for everyone involved. But the actual rollout is obviously going to be a lot harder, uh, have a lot more road bumps in it and just be a lot longer than most people expect, right? As as is most of these kind of very large projects that actually gets people on board. But obviously that's a big potential for Cardano. Just want to come to some of the updates for Cardano as well. Uh, they released the February release, which has some upgrades to the network. Um, one of them is this new multi-sig transaction um, update. So obviously a multi-sig wallet is a wallet where more than one person has access to it, uh, or, or I should say more than one person is required to sign transactions, right? So multi-sig, think of it like um, two people having access to the wallet and both of their keys of, uh, are required to sign it. Well, now, um, you know, what you can do is actually sign them in stages, right? So this, this has a lot of implications. So one person can sign a transaction and then kind of send it over to the other person and they can, they can um, do that at a later date. So this, this, this opens up a lot of different um, possibilities with, you know, having trusts and charitable trusts and things like that and potentially putting these in wills as well, right? So you sign a will and then you have money in the wallet and then you sign that um, obviously before you snuff it. <laughs> and then uh, the other person can can sign it, you know, at, at some time. So, you know, potentially uh, a lot of different kind of uses there. Um, and then it, let's look at the, uh, the the other upgrades, which are basically for scaling Cardano. So there's a ton of different scaling solutions, and these are quite unique to Cardano because Cardano uses UTXO as an accounts model um, and not the account uh, the accounts model like Ethereum. So there's kind of a lot of different ways to scale uh, Cardano, right? So one is transactions. Um, and you know, unspent transaction outputs can be scaled in different ways. You have Hydra, which can scale transactions, um, but obviously that's different to actually scaling um, smart contracts, which are much larger, right? So you can see what they're doing here. They're doing block size increases, pipelining and input, input endorsers. This will improve consistency of block propagation, gives more headroom uh, and aggressive scaling, right? So this is very different to just having a lot of transactions. UTXO is actually fairly, fairly easy to scale transactions um, Bitcoin does it as well with the Lightning Network, but when it comes to smart contracts, it's not really about TPS, it's about throughput and how much data you can actually include in each block. Um, so there's a lot of different challenges, but they're working on this and I expect this to come out in uh, June at the HFC event. So that will be when um, a lot of really big upgrades are kind of uh, put in place. Just want to come to the Sunday swap token rewards as well. If you were staking ADA in the Sunday swap ISO, you can now get your rewards on drip drops. I'll link them in the description uh, if you want to go through uh, to drip drops to get it. So come to the homepage. It should look like this. I've already done this. So you need to put your wallet address in, the wallet address that was staking in the, the ISO. Um, it will come up with your Sunday rewards right here. You need to click uh, claim token and it will take you through to this page. What you need to do now is to copy the address. So I've blanked it out here just so that you don't send things to the wrong thing or anything, but there's a address here. You need to copy this. Then you need to go over to the wallet that you use to stake 
uh, in the state in the ISO. So do that, come over to your wallet and then press send. Copy paste the address in here and then send three ADA to this address. You absolutely have to send exactly three ADA like I've done here. If you send more or less, they will think it's an error and they'll send, they won't send the token. So send three um, ADA to that address. And then a little while after, they'll send your Sunday tokens um, into your wallet. And then once you have different tokens in your wallet, there should be a, a tab up here that says assets, I think. Um, and then that will be in there. That's if you're using Yoroi. Obviously, if you're using a different wallet, then um, it won't be this, but you still have to send those tokens. So that's it for this video. If you want to get uh, some Bitcoin deposit bonuses, check the links in the description. If you want to check out the crypto investor course, that is linked in the description as well. I'm James with Money ZG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.